The S&P 500 broke a key level last week, and it seems like it might be setting up to make a major move. So what will the short do when that move finally come? In this S&P 500 analysis, we're going to analyze the price action of the S&P 500 and the S&P 500 ETF, the SPY, and see what are some of the possible price scenario for the coming week. Then we're also going to look at the stock market sentiment and the internal to see what they are telling us where the S&P 500 and the stock market might be headed. And near the end of this video, I'm going to show you some data to see why the S&P 500 will do what it most likely going to do. So stay tuned and be sure to watch the entire video. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Look at what the NASDAQ 100 and the NASDAQ Composite did not do last week. It did not make an all-time high. For many weeks, it's basically been making all-time high every week. And for the first time for many weeks, that it did not close at a, uh, with a new all-time high. But if you look at the New York Composite, and the Dow Jones Transportation, the Dow Jones Industrial, the S&P 500, and the Russell 2000, they are all breaking away from the consolidation zone. You see the uh, New York Composite, uh, the New York Stock Exchange Composite, the uh, Dow Jones Transportation, the uh, Dow Jones Industrial, the S&P 500, and also the uh, Russell 2000. The uh, NASDAQ for the uh, last week is sort of uh, a lagger uh, uh, index, it, it is underperformed relative to all these other uh, major uh, indexes. And looking at the FANG stocks, you see that every one of these FANG stocks basically closed down for the week except for Apple. Apple closed slightly up for the week, but you see that uh, a lot of these uh, uh, stocks, you look at Facebook, it's essentially got an engulfing candle uh, on a weekly uh, candle, so it's, uh, it's a outside week type of candle and closed down for the week. Now, Apple did close slightly, you know, a couple points higher than uh, uh, the uh, uh, previous week. But you look at uh, Amazon here. Amazon also got a uh, outside candle and sold off after uh, made a uh, interweek uh, high. And uh, Netflix reported earnings and disappointing guidance is also the new subscriber uh, numbers. So uh, that uh, sold off as well. And also Google uh, sold off. So they all were down for the week, except for Apple. And that's one of the reasons why you see some of the weakness and the pullback in the uh, NASDAQ uh, 100 and the NASDAQ Composite Index. On this week, the S&P 500 chart here, you can see that the price is still well within this megaphone channel and it is creeping slowly up toward the, uh, the all-time high here. And let's go and zoom in and see what the price action is for the week we see that the price range actually expanded and it has a range for the week of about 108 point, close to 109 point. For the week, it actually closed up somewhere around a little bit less than 38 point or 1.19%. And it is uh, so far, it's uh, about 1,032 point, close to 1,033 point above the uh, March low. And that's about 47%. And this is only uh, just slightly under 169 points from the high, from the all-time high of 4.97%. Uh, now, before we uh, take a look at the uh, price action of the S&P 500 and the CTF, uh, the SPY in a little bit more detail, let's go and take a look at the market sentiment and the uh, internal Let's take a look at this sentiment here. Looking at the VIX, you can see the VIX is still within this uh, zone here between the uh, 20 and the uh, 30 level. So definitely there is uh, not much fear in the market right now. And also looking at the uh, put call ratio, it is sitting at 0.6 as of the uh, close on Friday. And it's pretty much in the range of the uh, 0.6 and 0.5. So it is not getting overly... Uh, euphoric, you know, in, in terms of uh, bullishness, but also it's not very bearish. They are definitely, uh, you know, looking at a uh, cautious market here, but it is not uh, completely risk off. So there are some uh, risk on uh, level here as the uh, market try to break out of this uh, this consolidation area and then pushes up to the, uh, to the recent high. Looking at the daily up-down volume and also the uh, daily advanced decline, 
The one thing is clear here, if you uh, take a look at the uh, up-down volume, uh, on the down day, the uh, up-down volume seems to be uh, lesser now. Uh, there is uh, lesser uh, uh, selling pressure on a down day on the up day. There are a little bit more buying pressure on, a, on the up day. And if we uh, take a look at Monday, you see the up-down volume is only minus 2.12. And on uh, Thursday, it was uh, minus 1.6. Versus on a Tuesday, on the up day, it was 2.7. And on Wednesday, uh, it was uh, 6.9. Uh, on Friday, a little bit of a, you know, up X trickery. So we can't put too much behind this uh, divergence here between the up-down volume and the index itself. The index actually was up and uh, the up-down volume was negative. I mean, there was more down volume than up volume. But also the other thing to uh, note is the uh, daily advance decline. You see on Monday, when we had the down day, the decline was only 739 more decliner than advancer. And also on uh, Thursday, it was uh, uh, like uh, 237 more decliner than advancer. Versus on uh, Tuesday, there were uh, 884 more advancer. And on Wednesday, there were 2,255 more advancer than decliner. And on Friday, it was uh, 321. So you can see that on a down day, the uh, selling pressure is getting less and less. On the up day, the buying pressure seems to be uh, building up a little bit. So that's an encouraging sign for the bull. Now looking at the New York Stock Exchange new high, new low, this is one of the internal that is still waiting to get expanded upward. Right now, it's still kind of hovering under 100. Uh, while the index is making uh, its move to a higher level. So we need to see this uh, start expanding upward and getting to a little bit higher number uh, as the uh, index get closer to the all-time high. And the uh, real string is in the advanced decline line, the AD line. You can see that uh, you know, as the S&P 500 close higher and higher, the advanced decline is also uh, building momentum to go uh, higher. It is coming up to this pivot high, so uh, that's an encouraging sign also. And looking at the NASDAQ, new high, new low, although uh, it did not expand, but it's been holding its ground near that 100 level while the uh, NASDAQ 100 is kind of pulled back. So that's another strong sign that's show showing that the uh, internal strength is uh, building up a little bit. And this is the key one, right? We were uh, talking about the uh, AD line in the NASDAQ that seems to be, uh, you know, uh, not keeping up with the index. But look at it right now. It's, uh, it's actually uh, showing some more strength than the index itself. You can see that index is uh, pulling back and consolidating while the uh, AD line is actually uh, coming up and getting up to uh, these uh, pivot high level. So that is very encouraging for the bull. From these uh, sentiment and also the market internal, clearly showing a sign that the, uh, the selling pressure is getting lesser and the uh, buying pressure is uh, building up a little bit and also the internal is uh, building up uh, strength to help push this market up to the uh, next level and possibly come up and test the uh, all-time high. And again, you know, we are going to take a look at the uh, uh, S&P 500 uh, cash index and also the ETF, the SPY. Then near the uh, end of the video, I will show you some data why the S&P 500 have a high probability of making a new all-time high. Okay, let's take a look at the S&P 500 daily price action here on this daily chart. I have a circle couple area here. This is uh, like a rope of dope right? on Monday of last week. Right? It opened up and basically gap up and close this gap. It uh, moved up and then it faded all day and came back down, closes the opening gap. Then on Tuesday, it actually had a little bit of a follow through for on the downside, the dip buyer stepped in and bought it back up and the rest of its history for the rest of the week, it just stay up and stay positive for the entire week. And it's the same thing here that occurred uh, during the uh, 4th of July week. Right? On Monday, it closed down, and then on Tuesday, it got a little bit of a follow through. Then the dip buyer came in and bought it back up, and for the entire week, it was up. So that's basically what happened here as well. Now, the other things that we want to look at here okay, is the uh, uh, this level here, this pivot high, I mean, this pivot low. See, this pivot low here. That's the uh, 32.1468. And that's an important level because that's the level that they were trying to defend when it uh, before this uh, entire breakdown to take it down to the March low. You see that uh, you know it uh, it opened here on this gap down, 
Then it tried to come down and found some support and tried to buy it back up. Then on the following day, that's where this breakdown came in and sold the market off. Right. So the key thing is for this uh, S&P 500 to get back above this level, and which it did last uh, last week on uh, you know Wednesday and Thursday and Friday, it actually closed above that level. So you know although this level here, this pivot high. All right, so it's uh, 32.33.13. Uh, you know, that could be like a key pivot level, but what's really important is to be able to get back above this uh, this low here, this 32.14.68. So right now, we're basically looking for the possibility for this price to continue to move up and take out this uh, 32.59.81, essentially getting up into this pivot here, this uh, this gap level, this entry, right? That's the uh, breakdown high here on this candle. And if we could get back inside here, then there's another gap that it needs to be filled before that big gap going to get filled. And we probably see a little bit of a resistance here. And maybe we'll get the uh, pushback and come back down and retest this 32.59.81 before we make another push to get back and completely fill this big gap here and get above the uh, 33.28.45. And when that occur, you could see a lot of uh, these short will come in and cover because they know this all-time high is in play. Okay, so that's what we are looking at on the upside. Of course, there's always the possibility of a downside. Right? We can't bet on it. Nothing is guaranteed. Right? You know, and the downside is basically it's going to come down and retest this gap level here, and also possibly, you know. Uh, you know, kind of over time, then it's get down into this uh, lower uh, channel trend line and has that level. And if the, the trend line won't hold, then we're basically looking at this 3130.97, this level here to see would it be able to hold support. Then, of course, if it doesn't, then the uh, next uh, downside level here is uh, this level down here around 3000. OK, so those are the upside and downside scenario. We basically you know, looking more toward the upside to see would it be able to break through and get above the 32.59.81. Now, let's take a look at the uh, S&P 500 ETF, the SPY. And you can see that uh, on Tuesday, well, on Monday, it uh, it popped up, uh, filled the gap, and then it came down. Right? It came down. Yeah, we're, we're basically saying that uh, it was short about 50 cents. It, it gap up. And, uh, and then came back down. So essentially, this gap is completely filled, and it also filled its own uh, opening gap. Then on Tuesday, it came down. It got close to this composite point of control, somewhere around that 311.65. Uh, right? And then we found uh, support there, found buyer, and then they bought it back up. Okay, so uh, so right now we're essentially looking once again, you know, this basically this pivot low here to see. Would it be able to get back up above that pivot low, which it did? You could see on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, it essentially closed above that pivot low. And right now, we're essentially looking for this upside move and possibly get up to this gap here, get inside of this gap. So before we uh, take a look at that, let me uh, update the uh, composite profile to include the most recent uh, prices here. So you can see that the uh, composite value area high kind of got shifted up to the uh, 323 level here. And right now, so the upside scenario is that we're going to see what it be able to push to this uh, composite value high, essentially take out this pivot high and come up to this 325.85. And that is that uh, gap entry level here. And once again, just like the uh, cash index, we have uh, this little, uh, little gap here that needed to be filled. And most likely, we probably will see initial resistance there and then kind of push it back and possibly come down and back test this uh, 325.85 before it pushes up and fill the gap and get above the uh, 332.58. Then we're essentially looking at the possibility of testing this uh, all-time high. And uh, once you get up there, then the chances are we're going to see a new all-time high. That is the uh, upside scenario. And then, of course, the downside is that it could come back down and, uh, you know, take out that pivot, essentially, you know, come back down and retest this uh, uh, this uh, uh, gap here, right, this gap level, and see would it be able to, you know, get a push back up. And if it doesn't, 
then we essentially look for this trend line that would be the next support. Then it will be the uh, point of control here, this uh, 311. So if we come down, then we essentially are looking for eventually come back down and test that 298, 93, or that 3, 299 area. Okay, so uh, so that's the, uh, the downside scenario. And once again, the upside is essentially looking at the 325, come back, retest, and then push up. Now let's go and take a look at uh, the data to see why the S&P 500 could make a new all-time high. On the screen here, I got the uh, E-mini S&P 500. And this chart here, I have uh, highlighted or indicated all the uh, major uh, all-time high before a correction. Okay, so uh, right, these are basically all-time high and then got a little bit of a correction before it uh, move up again. And this is the uh, most recent all-time high that was made on February 19, 2020. What I want to show you is the fact that when the uh, E-mini S&P 500 future print a all-time high during the overnight session, the market will follow due in some future point in time during the day session. It will take out that all-time high that was made in the overnight session. Okay, and it has occurred through the years that I've been monitoring the uh, the futures and the market itself. So now, I'm not saying this thing is infallible. Anything is possible. Nothing is guaranteed. Just because it did that in the in the past doesn't guarantee that it will repeat in the future. Okay, so we're just going on probability. So far, the probability is very high that once you see an overnight all-time high, there is a very high probability that during a day session, that all-time high will be taken out. In other words, a new all-time high will need to be get printed during the day session to take out that overnight high. Okay, so here's what I'm going to show you. If we go back here on uh, September 21st, September 21st, on the right here, this chart here does not have the uh, extended hour prices on it, and this one does, okay, on the left. So you can see on September the 21st, 2018, let me zoom this in here. I want to make sure you be able to see this here because you can see just, just above it, right? This is the... Uh, regular day session all-time high on the 21st. It printed 2,946 and a quarter. Right, during the, uh, see here is the uh, the 21st. Right. So during the, uh, the overnight or the extended hour session, okay, the, uh, the future actually went higher, went above that. It went to 29.47. So three ticks above this uh, all-time high, okay? So what does that mean? Well, it means that eventually the, this high is going to get taken out, right? which we know it did because there is a new all-time high that was made in, uh, on uh, February of this year, right? So let's go back and uh, unzoom this, and then we could go and check that out. But in this case, it actually, you see here, Right, during May actually got a new high because this high, even after it corrected itself, right, it sold off, but again, it came back up and took out the, uh, the old high because it said the, uh, you know, the extended hour, the future printed a new all-time high, which will eventually get taken out by the day session. And here come that day session in May of 2019. It took out that high. Okay, so right now, if we take a look at the February, the February high, and let me zoom that in. So you see, I even marked it up here that the overnight all-time high is 33.97 and a half. The uh, day session that printed on the 19, okay, that's on the 19. This new all-time high is in the night session following the 19, okay. On the 19th, it closed at 33.93 and a three-quarter. 
right? That's the new all, that's the all time high for the ES. The following day, the fo during that night, the night session of the following day, it actually printed a much, a little bit higher high, okay, with a new all time high at 33.97 and a half. So again, it's similar to the September, right? It printed that and it sold off. Now it's coming back up. So the chances are it's good that it will most likely gonna come up and tag that all time high and put in a new all time high. Also, the other thing is I wanna show you uh, this area here. Let me go and zoom that in. Okay, now let's take a look at uh, this date here, which is November the 15th. 2019, right? You can see that this high here, right, is higher than this high. So again, the overnight session or the extended hour session is printed a higher high than the daytime session, a new all-time high. You can see that the future eventually took out that high and put in a higher high. Same thing here on this particular day. On uh, December the 2nd, 2019, right? You can see that this high here is higher than this high, okay? So once again, eventually the future took out that high because it went up, went to a higher high. On this day here, January 3rd, 2020, you can see that the high here is also higher than this high by a margin, right? And you can see the uh, it took out that high event. It eventually took out that high by moving to a higher high. So right now we're essentially looking at this high on February twentieth, two thousand twenty, right? This high is higher than this high. This is two twentieth, right? This right here. Okay, so we're gonna watch that level get taken out. So we will expect this 33.97 and a half gonna get tagged when the S&P come up, fill the gap, and start testing the all-time high. So this is one piece of uh, uh, data that indicate high probability that the S&P 500 will make a new all-time high. Now again, it's not a guarantee just because it happened in the past doesn't mean it will happen in the future, but it is a data that indicate a strong probability that it will take out the all-time high. So I just leave you with that. I hope you find this video informative and educational, and please be sure to give it a thumbs up and share this video with others. And if you have any comment or suggestion, post them in the uh, comment section below. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and keep other people safe by doing the right things.